Today is Saturday, September 21st. Good morning for WRCO News. I'm Caitlin O'Connell. A student displayed a pellet gun near a South Central Wisconsin high school. Sauk Prairie Police say the suspect pulled out the firearm during a Thursday afternoon disturbance outside of Sauk Prairie High School. No shots were fired and no one was injured. The youth is being held in a secure juvenile detention facility. He's facing charges for making terroristic threats, possession of a facsimile firearm, and disorderly conduct. Nathan Hale High School in West Allis was a recent target with a Kenosha High School facing several issues this week too. Schools in the state are dealing with a new wave of threats with the Wisconsin Department of Justice reporting unverified threats to dozens of districts. The State Office of School Safety has logged over 100 threats in this current wave. Investigators have yet to identify those making all the calls. Dozens of threat calls last year were determined to have come from outside of the country. The 93rd Annual Viola Horse and Colt Show continues today in Viola. The main feature of the event will be held this morning. Ashley Baker is Vice President of the Viola Horse and Colt Show. We have a horse show that is starting at 10 a.m. at the Bud Wheeler Memorial Arena. And then we also have a horse pulling contest starting at 9 a.m. And that will be at the Viola American Legion grounds. Weigh in for the horse pull will be from now until 930. There will also be arts and crafts mercantile across from the Banker Park from 8 until 5. Judging of livestock will be held from 9 until noon at the Don Kellogg Shelter. Exhibits will be on display at the community building from 9 until 4. The antique tractor pull starts at 10 o'clock and the parade steps off at 1. Ashley Baker recommends the best way to find a parking place during the parade. The whole town is pretty much part of the Horse and Cold Show. So, you know, the residential area, people can park. We would recommend coming before the parade and, of course, participating in the events that are prior to the parade and then staying for the parade. But the parade starts at 1 o'clock and really takes over most of the main street and, like, some of the residential by our village office. So we start lining up the parade at noon, and then the parade starts at 1. So if you're planning on driving through town, maybe come before noon or come before 1230. And, yeah, come early and stay late. Definitely. Two new events, the Kinchi Kids Pedal Pull and a chess tournament will take place after the parade around 2 o'clock. The four-wheel drive truck and tractor pulls will be held at 3. Musical entertainment will be featured in the evening. Monty Berger will be performing at the community building from 6 until 10. And the tradesmen will perform at the pulling grounds after the pull. Mr. Ed's Midway Rides, as well as food stands and concessions, will be all day at the 93rd Annual Viola Horse and Colt Show today in Viola. General admission is free and no carry-ins are allowed. More information can be found on the Viola Horse and Colt Show Facebook page. The 8th Annual Hill and Valley Exploration Tour, a celebration of rural living, will be held today and tomorrow. The Hill and Valley Exploration Tour is a unique opportunity to explore the hills and valleys View the fall colors, shop the fall harvest at rural farms, restaurants, and businesses, and learn about the vibrant small farm economy of northern Sauk, Richland, and Juneau counties. The Hill and Valley Exploration Tour is a collaborative effort to bring people out to revitalize the economy. 19 vendors are participating this year. The 8th Annual Hill and Valley Exploration Tour will be held today and tomorrow and next Saturday and Sunday from 10 until 4. Maps and details can be found at explorehillandvalley.com. You are encouraged to bring a cooler to hold all of your farm fresh purchases. The tour will be held rain or shine. The Muscaday Chamber of Commerce 25th Annual Fall Opener Banquet is being held tonight at St. John's Gymnasium in Muscaday. The doors will open at 5 o'clock. The buffet dinner will be served at 645. Matt Schneider is Vice President of the Muscaday Chamber. Along with your ticket cost does include a buffet dinner of steak and fish along with a lot of great sides and then entry and our grand prizes and door prizes as well. After the meal there will be a live auction and throughout the evening there will be a silent auction and raffles all featuring unique and remarkable items. Ticket prices to the fall opener are $50 per person or $90 per couple. Tickets can be purchased online at muscadetchamber.com slash fall underscore opener underscore tickets or at the event. 
All proceeds from the fall opener banquet will be used to fund future Muscaday Chamber of Commerce projects. Also during the evening, a special announcement will be made. We do announce our Citizen of the Year at the event, so we're excited to make that announcement to, to just add a little bit to the event. All are welcome to attend at the Muscaday Chamber of Commerce 25th Annual Fall Opener Banquet tonight at St. John's Gymnasium in Muscaday. Doors open at 5 o'clock. More information can be found on the Muscaday Chamber website. Franks Hill Effigy Mound site will open to the public for observance of the autonomal equinox this evening. Fall officially begins at 7.43 tomorrow morning. You are invited to join a gathering at the Effigy Mound site near Muscaday to view the sunset and gather around a campfire this evening to bid farewell to summer. Early risers are welcome to view the sunrise tomorrow morning. A short hike will be required to the top of the hill that offers a view of the lower Wisconsin River Valley. You may also visit the site during the day to see the mounds and the Grand Vista. The Three Eagles Foundation will have a tour guide available at 6 o'clock this evening prior to the sunset. Participants should arrive by 6 tomorrow morning to view the sunrise. Franks Hill is located two miles west of Muscaday near the intersection of Highway 60 and Highway 193. To learn more about the Equinox event or for directions, you can visit Three Eagles Foundation website or Facebook page. The events are subject to suitable weather conditions. The Milk Into Cheese program recently held its annual fundraising campaign. This was the big push, but donations are accepted year-round. Organizer Ed Chitwood reports that enough funds were raised to purchase 1,100 pounds of cheese for area food pantries. Tax-deductible monetary donations can be made anytime throughout the year by mailing a check payable to Milk Into Cheese, care of Ed Chitwood at 16025 Eddie's Lane, Blue River, 53518. Ed and Linda Chitwood will be hosting the annual Milk Into Cheese Hayride on Saturday, September 8th at 1 o'clock. The Hayride is free, but free will donations are appreciated and will be used to support Milk Into Cheese program. The Milk Into Cheese Hayride will start near the Chitwoods home, take Birds Creek Valley Drive off of Highway 60, and then follow the signs to the staging area. Reservations are not necessary, but are appreciated. Reservations for the Milk Into Cheese Hayride next Saturday, September 28th at 1 o'clock can be made by calling 608-537-2340. Be sure to leave a message if you do not get an answer, letting the Chitwoods know how many will be in your party. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation recently released an online archive of the Wisconsin Aeronautical Chart that highlights the past 56 years of aviation in the state. The first edition of the chart was printed in 1967 for public distribution as an aid for safety and air navigation. The chart now serves as an aid to safety and to promote public use airports and air travel across the state but is not intended for in-flight navigation. The first chart came out after the 1967 merger of the Aeronautics Commission with the Highway Commission, Department of Motor Vehicles, and State Patrol to form what is now the Wisconsin DOT. Before 1967, the Aeronautics Commission published the Wisconsin Pilot's Guide, which included an official Wisconsin airport map, showing select airports and seaplane bases. Wisconsin's aeronautical chart has been unique for the aviation community as it shows the entire state on one map. The current version of the map was rebuilt using GIS, making future updates and data sharing quick and easy. The chart also provides more details for Wisconsin airports, weather planning, air mileage, flight planning, as well as aviation safety information. Previous editions boast bird's eye views of Wisconsin state airport facilities and surrounding landscapes and highlights of air travel for business or pleasure. The latest edition includes tourism activities at Wisconsin airports, aviation events, aviation education, safety tips, and other lines of businesses provided by Wisconsin's DOT's Bureau of Aeronautics. You can visit the Wisconsin DOT's Bureau of Aeronautics Wisconsin Aeronautical Chart website to view the online archive or order the current chart. 
And the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources reminds migratory bird hunters that they are essential partners in preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in hunting areas and Wisconsin's waterways. The steps hunters take before leaving a boat launch or access point are vital for protecting hunting habitat. Invasives can hide in some of the most unsuspecting places. Mud on your anchor can hide seeds, eggs, or larvae of tiny species, such as the spiny water fleas. Water that collects in boats and decoys can carry diseases and insects. Snails and seeds can also collect under the vests of a hunting dog. Consider giving your dog a rinse with a jug of clean water or scrubbing them off with a brush while they go for a quick swim to prevent invasive species from hitching a ride to the next hunting spot. Of particular concern to hunters is the faucet snail. These snails carry parasites that can kill ducks if they eat them. Learn more about hunters can help prevent the spread of invasive species and minimize these risks on the DNR's Invasive Species Prevention webpage or by visiting Hunters Resources tab of the Waterfowl Hunting page on the DNR website. Stay tuned, today's vital statistics are next.